I'm so blessed to be here today. I'm not going to be like one of those hippie people that's like, I'm so blessed. Oh, I'm so blessed. But I am. I'm lucky. Um, what I'm not blessed about is, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make money and save money at the same time. Are you guys on board with me with this? Yeah. Yeah. Trying to make money and save money at the same time. So I'm, I'm like six days late for my period, so I'm thinking about setting up a punching booth upstairs around the corner. So for 10 bucks, you can punch me in the stomach, and I can make money and save money at the same time. Are we all on board? <laughs> Sounds like fun. I'm down. I think, thank you. I'm excited. To make, it's a weird economy. You know, you gotta do what you wow. can. <laughs> Um, I live in an apartment complex. I don't know how many people do that. I hate my neighbors. Anybody else live in an apartment complex hate their neighbors? My upstairs neighbor is a cat lady. Crazy 12, 13 cats. Smells weird when you walk up the stairs. I think she's sending her cockroaches on vacation to my house for the summer. It's gross. I want to kill her. She's terrible. And uh, downstairs, I have a downstairs dubstep DJ neighbor. Do you guys know dubstep? Well, no one can dance to that. It's not music. You know, it's just white people standing there going like, Wah. staring at their feet. It's terrible. I want to kill him. 11 in the morning, no dubstep. And then there's this bitch. She won't stop fucking all I hear all the time. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, wait, that's me. <laughs> Shit. I'm a bad neighbor. I'm terrible. So I'm trying to take it from the bedroom. No, it's true, because in the bedroom there's like this, this shaft, you know, if you live in an apartment complex, there's those shafts where everybody has things that connect to each other. So we're trying to have sex in the kitchen now, for multiple reasons. One, because it's quieter for the neighbors. Two, because I'm trying to keep it clean. I, I'm tired of being sticky all the time. I'm, I'm 37, I'm an old lady, so it's not really, if the cum's going anywhere, it's going on my tummy or my back, and I'm tired of being a sticky cum dumpster. I'm really done with that. I am. So we're in the kitchen, and I decided we're going to keep it clean, so let's just come in my mouth all the time. That's fair, right? I think that's fair. So we're doing it in the kitchen to keep it quiet for the neighbors, and it's fun, it's great, and he's like, oh, oh, I'm about to, so I turn around, and I try to get down, but I sort of run into his tummy. It was really cute. It was a cute little moment. And he had to go in the composting. Christening it the composting. Yeah. So that's great. So we've been... We, here's the problem with composting. It, it, most things are compostable, <laughs> except for eggs. So he's a vegetarian, so we eat a lot of eggs. The thing is that when you like have a half an egg and then all that sperm, like I woke up in the morning and there was this weird like retarded duck in the composting. <laughs> and I was like, how did this happen? It was like a balloon burst open. Do you guys know the old Asian ladies that eat those balloons, those weird like duck eggs that have been fermented over a hundred years? It's disgusting, I know, but that's what it was like. We gave it to my cat, he ate it. It was fine, don't worry. But I was in line at this uh, buffet with a bunch of old Asian ladies, and I was in line, and there were all these other people in line. And this Asian lady, just she just old lady, she just walks right around me and just gets her plate and gets. And I'm like, um, hi, we were all in line. And she says, Confucius say there is no line. And I'm like, wait a minute, I know there's a line, we were all here. Like, you know, and she says, all things in nature are curved. Like, my boyfriend's dick there, curved. She went right around and she got the most of the balloon. Speaking of my boyfriend, that was me being racist. Everybody is okay with that? All these pits are like, okay. Here's the thing. If I was an old Asian lady, I'd be racist too, because if I had to drown my baby sister in like a... a yeah. Seriously, they've really done that. Like in the, so, so let them be first in line. I have no problem. Like get first on the bus. Do it. I haven't had a fucked up history. I'm just a white girl. I'm worried about my boyfriend's curved dick and how I can take a shot of whiskey out of it. Here's the thing, I want to do whiskey for real. I want to take whiskey dick, I want to pull the the what's it, the foreskin over the dick. I want to fill some whiskey in there. And I want to take a shot. That's whiskey dick for real. That's keeping it clean. That's like making the schmegma all like, you know, like clean. I'm just trying to keep it clean. I'm just trying to drink whiskey. I don't know. Um, other disgusting things I put in my mouth. Do you guys remember when they used to call food trucks roach coaches? Does anyone remember this? Now there's all these brightly painted trucks everywhere. You can buy anything from them. 
So, um, you know, I've been to Senor Sisig. They're, they take uh, deep-fried uh, french fries, and they put them in a Filipino burrito. They're delicious. And there's, there's a guy who does crème brûlée. That's insane. So I walked up to this bus. It was brightly painted, and I thought, you know, it's like my thirst. And I walked in thinking that I could get something from it. It was a bookmobile. <laughs> so I walked up, and I said, I'd like a steaming hot cup of Kafka. <laughs> but then, all of a sudden, I realized... I was inside of a roach, and I looked down at my hand, and it was a banana, and I looked out of the window, and there were burning giraffes and melting clocks, and I was like, da-da, da-da, but that's surrealism. <laughs> that was a literary joke. <laughs> you guys, um, I am a crazy person. I'm a crazy cat lady, uh, but I'm a different kind of crazy cat lady. I want to take my cat, I want to shave him, I want to knit a sweater out of his fur. I want to make him wear it. <laughs> That's the kind of crazy cat lady I am, right? <laughs> but they've been looking for medication for me for years. We don't even know how to figure out what to do. Speaking of my bald pussy, I'm 37 years old. And uh, I, I, have a new, I have a new boyfriend. Well, not new, like five months. But I decided to kind of shave my, shave my chastity belt. So I was getting into my business. And I was getting to shave this top merkin, and I realized I have a bald spot on my pussy. Oh my God. So finally I felt like a 37-year-old guy. What happens when that happens? You find the bald spot. Do I, do I comb it over? Do I, do I have like a comb over pussy? Or do I like wear a bandana like Bret Michaels? Or do I just get hair plugs like Axl Rose and be like, hair plug pussy. No, I don't, I don't know. I think that I'm just going to shave it like a real man. I'm just going to go bald, just bald pussy. No, don't worry, you guys. I'm going to leave just a little tiny soul patch so that I can be so douchey that I can clean my own vagina. So here's the problem. Once you shave the front, you got to worry about the back. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm 37 years old, and I don't know how to make a hemorrhoid look cute, but I'm going to try. So let's, let's shave that shit together. <laughs> so I am an insane person. We've discussed this. And uh, I love drugs. Um, I love, like, pharmaceutical drugs. They have great names. Abilify. They tried to put me on this. Abilify. I'm able to fucking fly. Woo! Abilify! I don't know if anyone's ever taken it. It's really fun. And then there's this other one. That they're like, whoa, you're flying. Too hot, girl. We're going to put you on some Wellbutrin. And I'm like, well, but... I'm not going to kill myself this Tuesday. So that was, uh, that didn't work out. I was like, can I just have some Ambien? Can we just get bilingual in this joint? A-M-B-N, morning's good. It does what it says. I'm so down. But they're trying out a, a new drug for depressed lesbians. It's called Tridigigan. <laughs> if you guys have tried that. I'm trying to get on the list. <laughs> but I've been trying too much dick again, man. I was like, I need to try something new, something other than dick. So my boyfriend's like, well, can I stick my balls in your mouth? And I was like, that'd be fun as long as you deal with my issues. I'm hungry. So if you could take your ball sack and dip them in some marshmallow fluff, and then roll one ball in chocolate chips and the other ball in graham crackers, because if I'm going to have your sweaty ball sack in my mouth, I kind of want it to taste like summer camp. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm after Because I've been a summer camp counselor for years And I've been a nanny I'm a great nanny I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an adequate nanny Just because I have sex on top of a baby It doesn't mean it's pedophilia Because I'm not having sex with a baby I'm having sex on top of a baby And I'm keeping eye contact with it all at the same time Just because I'm getting banged from behind Don't worry because the baby can only see 15 inches And I'm keeping eye contact And just because it's first words or uh, uh, doesn't make me a bad nanny. That makes me a bad nanny. <laughs> so, thank you, I got it. Woo! So it's no stranger that I love little boys that live with their mommies. So I love 23-year-olds. I mean, I fucking love 23-year-olds. I mean, I love fucking 23-year-olds. And I don't mean that I love fucking 23-year-olds. It's confusing because I'm an aunt. So people think, that's a baby orgy. That's gross. It's not okay. I mean, it's cute. And they have a great soundtrack. It's like, baby, 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 oh, baby, baby.
baby, baby, no. Because the baby's humping your leg and he's three and he has poop on him and that's gross. So it's not fun for anybody. So um, Justin Bieber writes terrible lyrics and I've been trying to figure out a way to make money so I thought I'd write lyrics. And I used to be a poet. I'm still a poet, come on. But uh, so I, I thought, well, I'll write lyrics for death metal because they only have like 10 words in there anyways, right? So my first song has an uh, end rhyme for all the poets out there. And it goes, puppies, kittens, unicorns, lots of porn. See, there was end rhyme. There's a porn in the corn. So my second song, uh, is, it, it deals more poetically. It, it has assonance, has embedded rhyme. So, so it goes, <laughs> see what it goes. Chain at dawn with chain saws. Dawn saws. Is it? Aw, sounds good. The, the one I think's really gonna make me money is called 23 Year Old's Lament. It goes like this I have the worst roommate. Knock, knock, knock on the door while I masturbate. Oh, mom. Why do I live with my mom? <laughs> the same thing. I don't know. These guys are all on their internet and they're watching all these things. Here was a news story that came out on Monday on Yahoo, you guys. The KKK is trying to adopt a freeway in Georgia. And I know, like, we're paving the road to racism. Is this okay? I don't know. Here's the thing. They're coming from a really green perspective. Okay? Like, they, they want the streets not to be black asphalt. They want it to be white. And they're coming up with a really new, like, green element. They're just going to use the recycled bones of dead Jews, you know, to make the asphalt, white asphalt. It's like, it's different. So here's the other thing. They're, don't worry. The signs will be black. The signs will be black. There will be solar, solar panel signs. And they'll be hung next Saturday all along the freeway. Don't worry. And then the lights will no longer be like electric lights. They're going to be just burning crosses. So it's really earth friendly. So it's go Georgia. KKK. No? It was like, oh, oh. So maybe rape jokes will get you guys better. Anybody like rape? Here's the thing about rape. I don't know about you guys. I don't know about you guys. I don't know about anybody. But if you've taken a flaccid dick into your mouth and sucked it till it's hard, man, that's motherfucking power. Nobody? Nobody down for the power? Like, okay, so before I rape my boyfriend in the morning, because he's my age, you know, he's, he's 38, uh, and so I let him know first, you know, I kind of crawl up on him and I, I tap him on the head and I'm like, I, I got some good news and some bad news. The bad news is I'm going to rape you. The good news is I'm going to rape you. And then maybe make you some coffee and some waffles. Because what I've learned about relationships is that you just need to keep your mouth closed until the dick is coming at it. And then you open. Thank you guys. My name is Kevin. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Joe.